Hi, my name is Dr. Patrick Mulvihill, and I'm the Director of Technology at Hebron Christian Academy. Uh, this is for my fellow agents of the Incident IQ ticket software uh, that we're moving to. wanted to do just a quick um, tutorial on how to work a ticket. Um, I definitely, there's a lot of different features of this new software, so there's going to be things that we're going to learn as we go, but I want to just do a quick video tutorial just to kind of give you the basics. Uh, first of all, um, when you first go to the Incident IQ um, the HCA Help Center, uh, which is going to be your Incident IQ link, um, you're going to click on that and it's going to take you to this sign-in page. This sign-in page is going to give you the ability to log in with your Google account. So you're just going to click on that button and then choose your Hebron Lions Google account. That's going to take you into the Incident IQ dashboard. Now from here, um, you click on the, the dashboard, you're going to see some basic details. Now, understand that if you're part of multiple teams, uh, you're actually going to see um, a lot of tickets. You're going to see a lot of information. Um, Incident IQ handles ticketing a little bit differently and departments and things a little bit differently. So if, you, if you're seeing um, a lot of tickets uh, from multiple departments, it's designed that way. Um, up at the top, you're going to see everything that's assigned to you, whether it's uh, from a single department or multiple departments. You'll see tickets that are assigned to others within your departments. And then if there are any unassigned tickets, which hopefully there won't be, but um, and just in case a few get through, we'll be able to, to do that. Um, there's also a statistic here for tickets that are resolved by you today and this week, just to kind of give you some um, numbers about uh, all the great work that you're doing. So um, best thing to do here is um, if you go to the ticketing aspect, and you, you may not have all of the same um, menu items here that I do, but you will have this tickets uh, menu item. If you click on that, you're going to see um, some options here. First of all, note that the options uh, at the top here are dealing with all of the tickets in all of the departments that you're a part of. Now, if you're only a part of one department, um, then you don't have anything to worry about. But if you're an approver for, for uh, purchasing and maybe you also are in the facilities department or maybe you're in the technology department, whatever it is, you're going to see all of your, your um your tickets if you click on any of these top options. So you've got all open tickets. This is um, all open tickets available to work. Um, well, first of all, it starts off with all open tickets, which this is again going to be everything in every department that you're a part of. I'm a part of all the departments, so I, I'm seeing all these tickets. You're not going to see all of them, but you may see more than you, you expect to see. Um, across the top, you've got tabs available to work. These are tickets that are either in process um, or <clears throat> they're, they're not, I mean, basically they're, they're not completed. They're in some form or uh, some part of the process. And so they're available to work. Uh, you've also got tickets that are assigned to you. And these are tickets, again, they're gonna be from all the different departments. So if you're in part of multiple departments, you're gonna see multiple department ticket lists here. You'll see also a, a thing for assigned to others. This is all the tickets in, all of your departments that are assigned to others. And then of course you've got the uh, unassigned tickets uh, option here. So you can see tickets that for some reason haven't been assigned to anyone and need to be. Um, and so that is these first options here. Um, you can also see the closed tickets. You can click on all tickets and see open and closed tickets. And then there's the team section. This is the important section because if you're, if you're working on something specific, you probably want to go down and click on your team. So for me, I'm going to click on technology. Now, again, I have these tabs across the top, which help me to kind of organize um, technology. This is all of the open tickets in technology. So they, whether they're assigned to me or Jonathan or Philip, uh, they're all going to be here. I can click on the assigned to me tab, and that's going to give me just the tickets that I need to worry about, which is where you're probably going to want to spend most of your time. You can see tickets that are assigned to others and then of course unassigned tickets. Um, you also have the ability to create custom views. We'll do a kind of a tutorial on that maybe a little bit later. Um, but what you can do is um, you can come up here and click on the little menu and click new view. And then that's going to give you the ability to create a, a custom view by adding filters and columns and things like that. Um, you can definitely play around with that. You're not going to hurt anything by doing that. And we'll do some more, um, some more training on that a little bit later. 
Um, to work a ticket is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna, you know, based on the information we have here, we have uh, kind of the description of the ticket um, uh, that the person submitted, um, who it was who submitted it, what the status of it is, and then who it is assigned to. We can click into the ticket by just clicking on it, and what we get is this screen. And so again, we have the the ticket that was submitted, the information that was submitted. If you have um, one of the tickets like a counter request or something, you're gonna have a lot of, of fields in this area as well. And so um, you can, you're gonna have all that data that they put in uh, when they submitted the ticket that you see here. A technology ticket is, is basically just a description of the, of the need and so that's all that I'm seeing here. So to work this ticket, all I have to do is just click start ticket. And all that's going to do is kind of put it in progress. And so the status is going to change here to in progress instead of submitted. Um, it's going to basically give me this ticket progress section here. And I can then, you know, work this ticket however I want to, to do. Now, if I need to communicate on this ticket, I can use the comment section. And so here I can add a comment. Um, when I add that comment, maybe I have a question for the person who submitted it, or maybe I need more information. I, this is just like an email, so I can put the information in here. I have to make sure and click this visible to requester. If I don't click that, then the information that I post is only visible to me and to other members, agents on the team. So make sure that you, if you want it to send an email to the requester, you have to click this visible to requester. Type in your comments and then hit add comment. One other thing you can do is you can also um, click this waiting on requester. So not only can you make it visible, it will send an email to them, but if you click this before you hit the add comment, um, it will actually put it into a different status of waiting for requester. The nice thing about that is that basically the requester has 48 hours to um, to before they get a notification to say, hey, we're still waiting. Uh, and then after 96 hours, it actually closes the ticket. Um, and so that's something that is a feature that we can, we can turn on or off depending on the department. It's something we use in technology. Um, but if, you know, we can, we can look at that and, and see if that fits the need. But right now, all tickets, if you click on this waiting on requester, it's going to close that ticket after 96 hours if there's no activity. So um, that's helpful um, when maybe the, the person decides they don't want it, but they forget to, to notify you or whatever. So um, so that's how you that works. Um, you can also, there's some other options here, um, like you can record your screen. And if you want to show them how to do something, that really doesn't apply to, to other tickets you know, other than technology. Um, actions and shortcuts really none of that is necessary um, we may do some more training on that later as well um, but as basic communication add your comment visible to requester click the add comment button you're going to see a log down here of everything that happens every email that's sent every everything um, and then once you're done with the ticket and you're you're ready to close the ticket uh, then all you have to do is you'll have this button that says resolve ticket you come out here, you click the button. Uh, there are some other options here. You don't really have to use those if you want to. If you find them helpful, you're welcome to. They don't do anything different. They just kind of say, you know, like, why did you close it? Well, we resolved it because there was no issue found or no response from the requester or a duplicate ticket. Um, and so there's just some, some maybe reasons why you resolved it there. But you click that resolve ticket and the person gets notified that, you know, it was taken care of. So. For most tickets, what you're going to do, you're going to open it, you're going to start the ticket, comment, hey, we got this taken care of, we ordered this, we you know fixed this, whatever, visible to requester, add comment, and then resolve ticket. And that's going to close that ticket out. So if you have any questions or concerns, please let us know. Uh, like I said, we'll definitely be uh, looking at this in more detail and doing some more training in the future.